And so how lucky am I to be here with Guy Thornycroft having a chat about the meaning of life, right Guy? This is one of those wonderful occasions where you find somebody who's got all the same thoughts and ideas. <laughs> Loving it. Yeah. yeah, this is what happens when you find someone who's really in alignment with the way that you think and you suddenly realize you have all these light bulb moments going, oh yeah, me too. Oh yeah, me too. And so when there's synergy, the conversation flows and it just feels right, don't you think? It's easy, so comfortable. Yeah. And, you know, this is what I do with my um, career coaching clients as well, when they're trying to look for more meaning in their careers, where they're looking for a job. And sometimes when they go for an interview, it just doesn't feel right. And more often than not, it's because the values are in misalignment. When you're coaching your clients as well in their businesses and trying to find the meaning, what do you find, Guy? It's mostly about having lost that sense of passion and, and, and direction. Mm. And it's uh, people who've ended up in situations that um, they're uncomfortable in, um, mm. ill health or, or relationship breakdown or maybe even a death in their family, but some sort of crisis that sort of makes them come to a head and start thinking about where am I going? What am I doing? Why am I here? Um, I need help because I don't know how to get out of it. And, and it's really hard to see a way forward without extracting yourself out of the, the immediacy and the panic of the situation. Mm, uh, yes, that, it, that happens so often, isn't it? When, when you're working, 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 and these days, especially for so many of us, men and women, we're, we're like in a sandwich generation where we're waiting later and later to have children, which means that our parents are getting older and older, and then we've got responsibilities on both sides. And so we've got young children we're looking after, we've got aging parents, we've got the job, we've got the mortgage, we've got all of this stuff going on that we don't really have time to think because we've got to pay the bills yeah. and then we carry on and carry on and sometimes it can be for 5 10 15 years and then all of a sudden you think what's what's happened to my life i'm not where i really want to be and i'm constantly stressed and and possibly out of out of community um, there's there's so much movement we we move for jobs we move for um, you know lifestyle we move for so many different reasons but the the idea of having grandparents and parents and, and, and children all living in the same town or, or even the same suburb um, is quite rare. Uh, so all that support network and things like that, fantastic on Skype, but not very practical when you need somebody to pick up the kids. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, I think those support networks aren't, aren't necessarily there as they may, may have been previously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think in, the, in this global economy and so many people, you know, are tapped on the shoulder to say, hey, would you like to set up an office in Japan? Melbourne, Japan. Oh, yeah. It doesn't even have to be uh, interstate. It can be international. Yeah, I've, I've had five country moves in my life because I, I grew up in Hong Kong and went to uni in America. Then went back to Hong Kong to start working. Then I moved to San Francisco to work, then to London, then to Singapore, ended up in Singapore actually for 18 years, and then Sydney. Didn't like Sydney after two years, <gasps> then moved back to Singapore for another four and then came back to Sydney again. And every time it was a big transition. And I have to admit that I felt um, quite, quite a, a, a bit of anxiety each time I made the change because I thought, would I be able to carve a new niche for myself? Would my career be able to continue? Can I do what I love doing uh, every time I made a change? But I think that really helps you to build the resilience. And when I'm coaching my clients, I love telling stories. I, I bet you do too, Guy. I love telling stories. And, and when people realize, hey, I think we're on the same page, Jane, you really get me, um, then that's when you can start to make some breakthroughs as well to give people clarity. You must have your clients opening up so much to you when you're working with them. We, we've have gone, I mean, you've, you, you started that, that idea of moving countries, but I, I was born and brought up in Zimbabwe, mm. ended up doing university at South Africa for five years and working there, then moving to England, then to Scotland. Um, and lived there for five years. Um, and I only moved because I, I had one of those crisis moments of, of, of suddenly realizing that it was either this forever or I needed to make a change and then ended up moving to, to Australia. Mm -hmm. So that moving does build resilience. But uh, as you say, I think it's a two year process just to settle into a community, just to be start finding a plumber, a doctor, a, you know, a support network. Um, and I think that that's not an uncommon un thing for, for people to find themselves in. Yeah, I mean, just think people moving with children as well, finding the right schools, is it going to harm them later when they want to go to university? One of my friends in the UK um, didn't take an overseas posting because her kids were in the right schools. Mm -hmm. And she was so concerned that if she took them out, yeah. because she didn't want to put them into boarding school, that they'd never get back into that British system again. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and so, yeah, lots, lots, lots of things to consider. You know what we must do, Guy, is we need to have a podcast interview and we delve into this. Deep. That'd be fun. Yeah, that would be really That'd be fun. really fun. So what, you, I, what you've just said about the career, yeah. I come across that in a divorce situation. Mm. So I'm really unhappy in my relationship, but we can't get separated because of the kids. Yeah. They always use that as the excuse. Mm-hmm. But what I found is, is that if you've got happy parents, you've got happy children. And, and they're far more resilient than we are as adults. I think we've become more and more stuck in our, in our, in our mindset, whereas children are still fairly malleable um, mm. and they adapt. Yeah. Um, they're far more adept at, at, at making friends. They're more happy to go up to, to strange people and go, hey, can I play or come and play or you know, let, let's interact. As, as adults, I think we've become more isolated and more hesitant to, to, to you know, forge new territory and, and, and make new connections. Yeah. It was um, quite tough. Um, I, I moved from Singapore to Sydney when I was going through a divorce, actually, my children were 14 and 16. And at that age, gosh, it's hard to move, move, especially girls, you know, they've got very strong yeah. friendship groups. Yeah. So coming over here, it was really quite a struggle. But over the years, and, and now my, my children, are, you know, <laughs> one's married, I'm about to become a grandmother, uh, the other one's just got engaged. So I mean, it's lovely. But what both of the girls have said to me is, mum, going through that change we didn't want it at the time and we went through a lot of you know emotional ups and downs but mm-hmm. it's made them much stronger they've developed resilience and what they have realized is is that they have a global network of friends now because oh. they're all over the place and one of my daughters is in london and i would say eight of her friends from school in singapore united world college are in london as well oh, and right. They've all got back together again. And so it's, it's made them much stronger women in their own right, having gone through that turmoil. Yeah. The important thing is, is that as parents, we need to be there for them. Anytime mm. you want to talk, you're there. Mm. And it's that unconditional love. You know, we could talk forever about this guy. Let's do this <laughs> podcast. All Would right, you that's on. on. You've heard this that first time, lovely. guys. Would, yeah, your career podcast. We will book it in. And so for everybody, you'll need to look out for uh, the upcoming episodes on your career podcast with Guy Thorny. What fun. Yes, lovely. Well, thank you so much for this little chat. It's been wonderful getting to know you as well. Meeting of minds. (laughs) So enjoy that.